That's gonna be like the most questionable one of the day. Oh, but sorry, Nick. Oh, oh. excuse me. He goes, he just does the opposite way. Exactly. day. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what if he literally just dipped out? <laughs> <laughs> Episode 8B2, starting with sampling new flavors. What is this one? Pre-extreme orange. We're diving in that quick. Yep. Yep. Hitting it. I think this is more of like an orange creamsicle flavor, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. Fair warning. You guys already know, but I have taste and smell because of COVID, so (laughs) don't trust me. I told you. It it smells like orange now when you mix it. Oh, this is actually orange. I like that. That's a 10 out of 10 for me for orange. It hits you like the orange. It's great. It's good. It reminds me of Tang. Yes. Like literally the same thing as Tang. I can't taste the thing. <laughs> but I'm, not <laughs> I'm going backwards, I think. Do you remember Tang? Recovery. Of course I remember Tang. It's like Tang if you it's double so mixed it. Like if you didn't do the suggested size, but you did the extra scoop. The fat kid size? Yeah. Size 38 in high school size. <laughs> so. <laughs> it was a special guest. This one is a little bit. Um, Did you already try these? No, but it's I'm going all by smell. Which one was this? This one this was more lemony. This is the Icavon signature flavor. Yeah, if the, we can do this right. What is this, John? It's too lemony. It's just too lemony. Lemon cookie protein. Okay. It's mi- it's missing the like the thickness of the cake on the back. It was like I don't know if it's taste. Like it. There's like a bitter thing on the back end. Yeah. It's missing like there. the cakeness, like the battery. And it has. It needs like milk. Like a, milk. Like a yeah, thickness of milk? It needs the milk? It needs less less lemon, more cream. I wouldn't even say less lemon. It yeah, just needs the back end of cream. It needs more cookie. More cookie. Are we going cookie or are we going lemon pound cake? I think this is pretty bad, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> the end is bad. The front's not bad. The idea of lemon cookie is good. I had a great lemon cookie from Paradise Bakery when we were in Aspen. And I'm trying to remember how that tasted right now. I need some ginger. Yeah, Cleanse your palate. Something. Or coffee. Oh, that's only for smell. Sorry. Okay, John, this is what? Ice caramel. Ice caramel. Coffee. Coffee. coffee protein. This one is questionable. Isn't that? With? No, I'm telling you, this could how be bad. How much caffeine? The other one, it was strange though, is the other one was good. Okay, this is ice caramel oh, wow, this coffee is protein okay. with 80 milligrams of caffeine. Good? Is it good? Yeah, the other one was good. Uh, it's good. Fuck, oh, it's damn. really good. This is our next flavor. Incredible. This is great. This wow. needs to be made now. It's like a caramel macchiato. Yes. It's perfect. And it's like the perfect consistency and all. Okay, so what we need to figure out is if we're going to go with two or just one. Two or one. So we're going to offer this in caffeinated no, and non-caffeinated? No, caffeinated. If it sells really well, we can make no, it decaf. No, we can decaf. Start decaf normal, though. Start with normal. Start with D- people who drink decaf coffee are questionable, and I know you drink decaf coffee. I drink decaf coffee, and I know you drink decaf coffee, but you guys are old. Yeah, but what if I want to drink my caramel macchiato at n- before bed? I I drink a decaf at night. Well, how much ca- caffeine is in this? Eighty milligrams. That's not bad. So a coffee. Is that what a coffee has in it? <laughs> yeah. It's bad it's for a coffee. your nervous system. It's not about if you can fall asleep. It's about cortisol. Yeah, it's about your adrenals. You should Gosh. know this. I should. You were in adrenal <laughs> fatigue. Have low cortisol at nighttime and then high at in the morning. This I is know. gonna reverse that. Alan's been telling me that for a minute. Right, Matt? Right. If we could rush this flavor, that would be great. great. Yeah, we yeah, really we need to push something something back to yeah. replace. Uh, the only one I could even taste. That was good. That was really good. Two weeks to make the fucking label, is that what you said? Yeah. Could get the label back for ten weeks. <laughs> <laughs> How the business <laughs> operates. You say for context, this is exactly what happens every time. I can make the label. This is really good. Yeah. This might be like my favorite. Also, what I'm happens every time? Scott can do it. <laughs> this could be my favorite protein. Honestly, it's it's pretty awesome. It's really good. I'm not gonna lie. And putting it with coffee every morning. Great. When I have coffee, I just do like cold brew and raw chocolate. Protein can I ask an honest question ice? about your coffee with protein? How does it not clump? You mix it's, it first. You mix it and, and then, then you add ice. ice. Cream. Wait. Yeah, but, but every cream. time I put hot coffee. No, oh, I do cold brew. Protein. I do cold brew. What are you talking about, protein? This is the equivalent of having a backseat driver, but on a podcast. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> okay, both of you are rude. 
But how do you really do it? Because every time I've done it, it clumps. Like, I do it with cold brew. But if oh, you like did you it, shake the shit out of it. If you did it hot, it, it doesn't clumps. explode. Courtney has a frother. That stupid thing. Like, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have one of those at the gym. Those are clutch. Okay. All oh, right. Good. So orange approved. Orange is approved. Lemon needs Not some so work. Much. Lots of work. Is there any more of that orange? Bro, it's gonna have it. Yeah, I want to try the orange. Chris doesn't want it. Has caffeine in it. I'm saying like, we need a decaf version. Oh, if that was decaf, he would have drank it. Watch that flavor come back, decaf. It's terrible. As he's drinking an energy drink, really? <laughs> yes. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the orange. I couldn't taste it the first time. We didn't talk about this yet, but I would like to know what each of y'all's favorite part of Aspen was. I love Aspen. There's so much that's great. Okay, let's give. Why'd you start going there? Uh, because Sammy's dad had a condo there, so I went. Um, like was it three years ago? I think um, three or four years ago was the first time I went. Three, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it was three, three years ago, and then. Um, 2019. Yeah, so I went out and I had no. I didn't even know how to snowboard then. I used to like do shit when I was little, like mm-hmm. wake you wakeboard in Florida and stuff. So that was yeah. it. But um, I just fell in love with it. It's like a small town and. It's got like the best food. It has like the best mountains to snowboard. So, what's the population of Aspen? I don't fucking know. Oh well, I think it's, I think it's in, oh, off, in off season. He said six thousand. When they're busy, it's fifteen yeah. thousand. Okay, it says about between six and seven. How did you learn that? Bus driver. Bus driver. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I have a fu- I have my favorite part of Aspen. Let's hear it. The bus driver. Yeah. No, Is I'll go it last. Okay, let's say is it available to share? Yeah, I can share it. Well, share it. You have your idea. Go for it. So before you guys got there, we went out. Were you? No, you guys weren't there yet. It was for Sammy's birthday. So Sammy's birthday night, he, he could get a. He could probably possibly. Well, fuck. Is he yeah, get in trouble awful. for this? Yeah, I can't say it. I can't say it. Oh, yeah. somebody specific. It was awesome, but like I don't want the person to get in trouble, so I don't want to say it. All right. Oh, so I'll ask now. Um, favorite part of Aspen, I love the snow. I just think, I, honestly, I just think everything about it. The town, mm-hmm. walking around, snowboarding, just cutting up with the guys, getting to spend time with Jordan without the boys. Nice getaway. Yeah. Least favorite part of Aspen was the heat in our room. It was hot? It's too hot? So hot. What? Dude, like ridiculously hot, and we had no control over the... I'm pretty sure if we opened our windows, it blasted the heat. Yeah, which like is probably making it worse. Yeah. So it was hot to begin with, and then we would keep our windows open, and then it would just get hotter. Oh, shit. That didn't happen to me. Yeah. Okay. What about you? That was your first time, right? It was my first time. It w- you hyped it up a lot, and it, it lived up to the hype. I told you. It was awesome. Just because, like, you're, we're in, like, a hotel at the bottom of the hill. You don't have to worry about anything. The bus shuttle there, you don't have to drive. Everything's so small. Yeah. My highlight was probably watching you starfish down the hill, though. <laughs> <laughs> I only got it on film once, even though it was every time. But <laughs> it's okay. All the jokes you have. <laughs> um, what was your favorite meal? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like it was the one you guys had in the private one. The private chef was he awesome? That was wow, good. That was the worst meal for sure. What? It it was good. <laughs> okay, that wasn't the chef's fault. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was oh, good. It just one. Yeah. It just wasn't enough food, first of all. So, like, mm. I think he anticipated, like, having 15 females there. Yeah. And, like, we eat. We for, all like, ate last, and there was, like, a oh, yeah, slice we, of yeah. steak left. The food was good. I mean, yeah. don't get it yeah. twisted. The food was great. Uh, I just think Aspen's so hard because there's so many good restaurants there. I think, honestly, I think my favorite meal was the restaurant at the hotel. Breakfast? Jerome. At the Jerome. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that burger. Thing. Yep, I think that was my favorite meal. I think my favorite night was the night at Ketch. So, you know, yeah. Like, I like both, but like. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I said like the, well, Ketch's food is incredible and they just opened that Ketch steak, so I liked it. Um, I think it was, the food was good, but I think my favorite meal may have been, oh man, I don't know. I'm like, I, I love the breakfast burrito at the fucking place. I never had one. Yeah, so that's like my favorite thing, but they didn't, ha- you didn't have I it. I actually got it the last day and that's all I'll get now moving forward. It's so good. It's like not the same burrito at the restaurant. Yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. Um, but like dinner wise, I really like Clark's. Um, Clark's is like one of my favorite spots. And then honestly, like I didn't, didn't get go to there, go. Right? No, you didn't go. Yeah. Did you like the steakhouse? We didn't even get steak. Fuck, really? We just left. That was just a bad night. You left? Yeah. Bad night for all of us. It was just a shit show. Oh, so we all went through it. Yeah. Yeah. I went to Monarch and it was not good at all. Like the food was not, not good. And it was like super hyped up. But I had a re- snow lodge was awesome. 
every place has like something that I liked more than the other, and it doesn't necessarily revolve around food. But like the atmosphere at, at Snow Lodge is awesome. Yeah. So like the DJ, like the ambiance is super dope. That burger at Hotel Jerome was insane. Yeah. Like, probably one insane. Of the best I've ever had. And then you know like White House is a great lunch. Yeah. It's just tough. It's hard to pick one. Yeah. There's so much good food in Aspen. I think Aspen has like literally the best food ever like out of all the different places i've gone but my ultimate favorite restaurant no hands down in aspen is jing jing yeah, oh, yeah. Jing, jing's my favorite spot yeah, yeah. yeah. like the sushi the the peaking like the duck like the rice it's all fire and frank nice. owns it he's so cool he's like nice. one of the coolest people ever yeah cool and uh, people didn't see what i thought was really cool is that we were down there down were in the shorts we were with shali and the anaka crew dan from ghost yeah so that was the night Matt was saying we all went to catch and it was like a big group of us and we got our time alone and in the one night of all of us, two nights of us all together and we went out after to that, what was that bar? Oh, uh, a spaceship, an airplane oh, or something? Dude, it was something about like <laughs> an Escobar? Escobar. Escobar, yeah. Escobar. Yeah. Yeah. We went to this like nightclub with like stripper poles and like, we weren't like getting fucked up, but it was just, I haven't been in a club in so long. So we went to this place. Fun. This then, is the funniest later, shit ever. So out. we were going up the mountain one day and it was like me, Joey, and I think it was, it was just us two. It was at Highlands. And we were looking to the right and there was like this house of like Instagram hoes. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> to the right. And they were like all taking pictures like by the pool and stuff. Yeah. And then I don't know how, but like some of the guys from the Anaka crew like talked to them somewhere. Where did they meet? Was it out? It was at like dinner or something? Uh, they saw like their locations on like Stories or, or some, some shit. shit. Okay, so yeah, or so they Snapchat ended up reaching out shit. to him, and then we, they were ended up being at Escobar when we got there. So then we can, me and Chris convinced Marco to take his shirt off and go over there and like jump on the stripper pole and like slide down the stripper <laughs> pole, and like we went over there to save Marco because he was getting thrown out of the section, and one girl like licked the whole side of his face, and then one girl was like naked on the ground. <laughs> it was pretty insane. Like it was a very questionable place. The best I, part was Matt got on the Super Bowl because he got a lot of drinks in Yeah, him. yeah. Oh, you guys missed wow. that. I did not. I was just saying, <laughs> yeah. it'd be a story. Huh? I watched a minute, like I skimmed through Marco's video. Yeah. Just yeah. to see, like, I, like, it's fun to see everything from different views. Yeah. And he goes, when Seabum and Dom tell you to take your shirt off in front of these Instagram girls and get on the pole, you do it. Don't get it <laughs> twisted. He was doing it no matter what. Yeah, that's what yeah. he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing it no he matter what. It. And then LT started doing an OnlyFans photo shoot in our booth with some random fucking girl. That's funny. But it was, yeah. There was a girl wearing a, like, a outfit, skin one piece tight. outfit, the exact color yeah. of her skin. Yeah. yeah. And I thought she was naked, and he just started taking photos of her, and she's just like posing aggressively on the couch. It was It was a lot. And then he literally looked over at one point, and he's like, I'm done. Photographing <laughs> fitness models. <laughs> I quit. He's like, no, you later, done. Marco. <laughs> Poor Marco. Need a new videographer. We have a few Q and A's. Figure that we go through that. Be a nice, really uh, way to get back into the podcast and back in the groove. So we put this up not too long ago. So these are all like coming in as we go. So I'm gonna try to get through these as easily as possible. But the first one I see right here is, how do you put up with family that always brings you brings up your past, weight of relationships, weight relationships and all that kind of stuff just basically it sounds like how to deal with negativity why the fuck your would your family be negative towards you in the first place yeah i was gonna say i don't think this is something i don't think that you deal with this i mean like i've had like i've had people like doubt i don't is it negativity or is it doubt you Good know question. because there's a there's a big difference between those two things like how do you put up with the with family that always brings up your past your weight relationships etc weight is in like physical weight yes Oh, I mean, wait, it depends how wait. they bring it up, yes. you know, like where they bring it up in a way where they, like, they want to help you or they bring it up in a way where they're like, you're fat. Sounds like they're not. Trying it, to sounds it, neg- it sounds yeah. negative. I mean, I don't know. That's a tough one. I mean, I've never experienced something like that. I've had pretty supportive family and friends. And if I didn't, I just stopped talking to them. But granted, like it's hard to walk away from your mom and dad or whoever it is. Sure. I think one of the hardest struggles people go with is having like a negative impact from a family member. Yeah. I don't have that. But like I've had friends who had and like. Like normally you can be like fuck that person, cut him out. Yeah, you can't do that. But like, way. Yeah, you can't do that with your with your parents. Yeah. So it's gonna be finding some way to communicate them, communicating with them about how it's really making you feel. Because hopefully, if they love you, they don't really understand how the impact it's having on you. Maybe understanding that they had that same kind of shit when they were coming up, and that's all they know. I mean, Maybe a lot of a shit. lot of stuff stems like that though, for sure. Because like my dad, when I was, so when I was younger, like my dad did have like spurts where he would be a dickhead, and um it was definitely like stem from his dad. And my mom would tell me that because mm-hmm. like I would always get upset about some shit and she'd be like, 
you don't understand like this is how your dad treated your your grandpa treated your dad or something like that but it just stopped you know i think it just yeah i mean i think a big part of growing up is not relying on your parents to make you feel better and being able to make yourself feel better Mm -hmm. and like not taking shit personally like you said if they went through some shit and they're doing it because of what they went through not because you're a bad person it's because they had a rough life too and they're hurting inside correct yeah which is everything in life it's just a harder thing to realize with family okay Next question. This one sounds pretty good. How do you mentally get over wanting to eat cheat meals on prep? I feel like this is a say louder for the crowd in the back. Do not be a pussy. <laughs> Matt, do you have any secrets of this? Or if you I mean, want it, I you want it. I don't tolerate that either. So yeah. I don't yeah. I don't think that there I mean it it what's your desire to compete? You know, mm-hmm. if it's an internal desire, it shouldn't be much of an issue. If you're doing it for other people, then it probably is gonna be an issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I eat whatever I want, so don't ask me this question. But you don't Same. so you don't compete though. Yeah, no. Yeah, if you're just new. Yeah. Like if you're just competing because it's cool or you want to like get something out of it that's not really fulfilling what you eat yourself, then you're gonna fall off probably. Do you ever have anybody who goes through that to you? They reach out to you? Yeah, I mean it definitely happens, you know. But I just I don't coddle that behavior. Um, I also, for those of you that may or may do this, like I also don't think I'm not somebody that does like punishment type stuff. You know, because I don't think that helps the problem either. So the best thing to do is just to get right back on course. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not somebody that adds more cardio because of a cheat meal or two cheat meals or whatever, because honestly, your body's going to stabilize. If you're in a deficit, most of the time, it might prove to be beneficial if it's not a reoccurring habit. Um, but it's it's more so just not beating yourself up mentally over it and moving on past it and not recreating it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of this question is a pretty simple question. I think uh, it's, it bodes a lot of conversation all the time. What helps you guys stay motivated every day? Everybody here drives at 100 miles an hour every single day, honestly. How do you guys stay motivated? I don't think it's mo- – I don't, really don't think it's motivation. I think it's we're disciplined more than anything. But what's that? What, there's one saying that everybody repeats, not everybody lives by. But, like, they know to say it, whether or not they live by it. But it's, like, successful people – aren't successful because they're motivated because they get shit done even when they're not. Yeah. 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 But like, obviously we have long-term things like Matt, I'm sure your family, the huge driving force for sure. It. It's not really motivation. It's just like, it's just do what you got to do. You know, like innate responsibility. Yeah. I think one of the most motivating things that I've gotten like over the years is like the more people that work for me, I'm more motivated to do well because like so many more people rely on me. Yeah. You know, like having, you know, hundreds of employees at all the different franchises and, you know, all the employees we have here, it's like, I have to show up to work because if I don't show up to work, like their kids don't go to school or, you know, they don't get to, you know, it's just, there's so much more weight on you and it's, it's like stressful, but it's also like one of the most motivating things in the world. Yeah. That, that brings a question I have actually is like now the, you go really fast with all mm-hmm. your employees. Yeah. What was it like in the beginning when you had a few mm-hmm. and that kind of, I don't know if you took it as stress personally, but like the stress of th- the thought of like this person relies on me. Versus now when you have more. Well, it's worse now. Because you have more? Yeah, because, I mean, in the beginning you have two or three employees. You know, you don't – it's not difficult to be able to compensate those three people or four people or whatever it is. And in the beginning I liked it because I was able to spend more time with them. Because, like, you know, like, for instance, you look at Cam. Mm-hmm. You know, Cam was my second, third employee, like a sales guy. But, like, I spent every waking minute of my day when I got to work with Cam. So Cam became Cam because I was able to give him that type of time and that type of energy. Mm-hmm. And he does the same thing now and passes it on. But like, if I could give that same time to everyone, I think it would be, I mean, we'd be all, in a, we'd be in a better place, but it's just like, you have to adapt and grow and delegate your time and your tasks. And you just can't do that all the time. Yeah. Matt, what do you I mean? You have a smaller staff, I guess you could call it for like Camp Jansen side of things. Yeah. Do you like, do you feel pressure or do you feel some kind of obligation to them as well? To make sure that you're like doing your part and making sure they're yeah i mean it's it's twofold i feel pressure not i wouldn't say pressure but i want to perform for the guys that work for me mm-hmm. um you know and both of the guys that work for actually all three of the guys that work for me in 2021 they all made over seventy thousand dollars in in income which that's that's awesome it's yeah. huge um and i think the the highest grossing income before that within coaching was 10 grand for 2020. So that that's special, um, you know, but just like Dom said, I think from a 
coaching aspect, I feel a lot of pressure to perform, but then it's also so rewarding when that performance of that individual pays off. Um, and then it's like, it's on to the next thing. So it's just like this reoccurring pattern. But yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say the guys that I, you know, the guys that I have now that work for me, I'm very blessed to have them. And they're also guys that are driven on their own. Um, but it's more so just like a mutual respect. Like I want to continue to, to drive the business forward so that way they can benefit. And then my goal long term is for them really to benefit. I think it's really important to make sure that that first person or that, that individual that you spend the most time with, you know, you really do spend time with them because you pass the torch to them, mm -hmm. you know, and then they have to, and it all comes from you. So if you're not training them right, the next person's not getting it right. And the next person's not getting it yeah. right. So it's just spending the time with those individuals to be able to eventually step back and grow. Because if, if you, if I stayed in the same position I was in, you know, four years ago or five years ago, we, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't be able to do any of the shit I'm doing because I would be still doing that. But do you, you don't have, you don't have any mentors. You don't consider unless it's just your mom. It's my mom. It's your mom. Yeah. And Matt, do you have mentors or have you had mentors? Yeah. I mean, I had uh, a few coaches in high school and college that I still, I would say, call on those experiences that I had with them to this day. Mm -hmm. um, in 2013, I would say that my biggest mentor in bodybuilding was Neil Hill. The, a common misconception that people have, especially now when they come to me about me being their mentor, is they just expect me to share my process of how I build a diet. And I think that's kind of looking at a mentorship role in a very small minded way. You know, like I, I was, I spent a lot of time talking on the phone with Neil and it wasn't about what flex was doing or what William Bonac was doing. It was more so ideology and, and kind of setting myself up for success, protecting myself mentally. Um, like those are the types of things that Neil instilled in me. It wasn't about, you know, what he's doing on a daily basis with Flex's diet. Like, and, and I didn't really care about that either because that wasn't my intention of being with him. Um, but it was dealing with setbacks, dealing with failures, um, knowing who to trust and who not to trust, you know, and I think from a mentorship role, that's what's so important because you have to have like your own belief system. And then within that own belief system, that's how you're coaching or, whatever you're doing should flourish, but then having people to kind of oversee that. And, and if you're don't have a lot of skin in the game or you're immature, like helping you guide you in ways that you can't potentially see yet. I think that's the biggest role that mentors can play. Do you guys think that everybody needs a mentor? I think everyone can get better. And if you're With naive one. to that thought, then like there's already a problem. I don't think you necessarily necessarily need one person who like you shadow under who's like your mentor. Yeah. I think it's important to see the strengths that people around you have and to know you always have something to learn from them. You said goals and how do you tackle them? You just said it. The reason why I like <laughs> what do you I, want? Do I it. like these questions because you guys all look at me like I'm like when I ask it you're like what do you mean? It's that's really interesting to me. And I <laughs> hope people watching cuz it's like. natural to you guys and it's not sometimes it might be hard to answer cuz it's so natural. I that is something you know I, mean? I find interesting when people like when they're talking like have you ever like had to sit down, take out a notebook and write down three goals <laughs> and how you're going to accomplish them? Have you ever had to try and do that? No. Never. But like this is all the stuff people have on like those self-help, all that shit. Like yeah. journal this and do that. It's like, you know, <laughs> there's things I want. I know how to time. get it and then you work to get it. Yeah. You're wasting time doing that. In my opinion. <laughs> I don't think you're necessarily wasting time because I don't think everyone has the kind of like innate drive and ability to work like we do. So like if you need it, it works. But I think it's, if you focus too much on those minute, de minute details, it's like going to keep you stuck in that. Like, I don't, personally, I think you should know what your goals are. Just I feel like if you make. start dissecting stuff on that deep of a level, though, it almost like prevents you from starting it. You're, you're hind start like hindering yourself. And you're like, you get in your head like, fuck, I got to do all this. And this is more than I thought it was going to be. And like, if you just like jump into something, I feel like you have a better shot of just like, you know, plowing through the shit and getting it done. <laughs> on that point, that may that's like huge goals, but like we do have like some shit. Like that board. Yeah. Those I mean, are, those are our goals. That's we're not trying even to goals though. That's planning. That's yeah. not the, the totally different. I mean, a goal would be like, we have to sell this much of this, but like, like make certain X, X amount of revenue. Do, we don't do that. Yeah. You know, we just, I mean, everything we've had and every goal we've hit, like we didn't necessarily even try to do. We just built the brand and stuff started happening. I mean, our number one goal is just get better. That's it. Yeah. And what all that entails. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. I think if you focus personal. too much on specific things and like you're obsessed with a thing, I think it could prevent you from doing it because you're not thinking about all the things that are needed to get to it. 
you know like there's there's goals every day you have you wake up every day and it's like how do i get better than i was yesterday or i know it sounds super corny but like that's the truth right like mm-hmm. how can the business be better today than it was yesterday and by doing that every single day great things happen you know vitamin shops gnc's you know big wholesale accounts and all the things that you want out of a business but if i woke up and i was like how do i get gnc today and i focus my whole day on that i'm, I'm not focusing on the things that are going to make me better to get to gnc does that mm-hmm. make sense mm-hmm. yeah there's a analysis by paralysis is what a lot of people call that yeah you will think too much about writing it down versus actually doing anything about it i'm not saying that people shouldn't do that if that helps them or if it like visually looking at something and i do it like, sometimes there's nothing Personally, wrong with that yeah it's just i don't I think too um you know from like an athletic realm and athletic standpoint what i've noticed so much in physique sports is is people set these overwhelming goals and they really have a hard time breaking that down on how they're going to accomplish that on a daily basis. But what I've noticed in that is a lot of these same people, they, they didn't play sports growing up. So I think within athleticism as a child, like you, you realize, you know, if you're at five or six years old and you say one day, you know, I want to be a professional sports athlete, like the trajectory to get there because sports is so part of our culture, it like makes sense, you know, Whereas if you take that same thought process within physique sports, a lot of people, the goal is to get turn pro or to get a pro card or to win a pro show. But yet between there and now, it's just empty space, mm-hmm. you know, whereas it's usually a logical process for it's groomed. You're like groomed as a kid. Right. You go through it. It's, yeah. it's peewee football. Then it's, you know, travel and then it's high school and then it's college and right. then it's the NFL. It's not skipping from peewee to the NFL. Right. You know, yeah, it's, I think, so I think within that question to help people that are like, well, gee, thanks guys. It didn't help me at all. (laughs) It's like, you have to learn how to obviously, yes, set big goals, but within those big goals, you have to learn how to prioritize a daily task that are going to lead there. Mm -hmm. You you work back slow down almost. Yeah. Like even with myself right now, even at the level I'm at, like, yes, when people are like chasing after the fourth title, fourth title, I'm like, yeah, that's the goal. Like, yeah, I say that, but like, but you're not doing that this month. I wasn't, I, that. That's on my brain when you ask me, but like when I took some time off training and then got back into it, literally my goal was, okay, go to the gym five times a week. And that sounds like a beginner, but like I'm still Mr. Olympia doing that. I'm like, okay, you're going to miss zero meals this week. This is your calories you're going to hit. You're going to train. Okay, you did that for a week. Now you're going to train to the intensity you're used to before. And then next week I'm like, okay, I want to train that intensity and not have a fucking heart attack on leg day. You know? And then I was like, okay, I'm going to train with Ian next week and I'm going to keep up with him. Yeah. And it's just like, it was just that's all. I'm not even thinking past that. Yeah. My literal only thing was today I'm training with Ian. I'm going to not die in this workout. I'm not going to give up on a set. Period. And then that's done. What's the next day? Yeah. Like you said, it's cheesy, but if you do that every day, right. You don't you stop moving and forward. And Chris is bringing up a good point too that I try to remind people all the time. Like it's not thinking beyond the day that you're in. Cause I think that also causes people to get overwhelmed. You know, it's not about next week or next month. It's like, what can you do to, to maximize today? A lot of people have that issue. You know, they're planning out their whole life and forgetting about what they can do today to do it all. And then that day ends and they didn't do shit. It's funny. One of the questions here, I wasn't going to ask this one necessarily, but it says, where do you see yourself in the next five to six years? I mean, no, but you I, definitely have a plan. I get that. But I think a lot of people think that way, that way first yeah. instead of today. And I think, you know, this is more so about my life, but I think I had this mindset in terms of what I viewed success at as a child. And, and it might've come from my upbringing or, you know, the way my parents raised me, but I had this mental hurdle that when I got married to Jordan, I wanted to bring her into my own home and I wanted to own my own house in order to do that. And then like, I finally accepted that, okay, maybe that's not going to happen. But for years I felt internal failure because from the time I was 12 or the time that I realized I had a desire to like a female, like this was my process of what success looks like. Mm. Um, and again, I don't know exactly where that came from. I would assume somewhere in my upbringing. Um, but like, that's something I struggled with for a long time after we were married is the fact that like, we're not going to a home that has my name on it, you know? So, and it took me a while to get over that and progress from that. But what are some of the challenges off camera? Well, we actually, that's why we didn't that's even talk about it. this, but we, that's why we did the samples today yep. for you guys. And I, and we also just pro, uh, just put the raw life episode one up. Yep. I would say right now, one of our biggest hurdles is flavoring for things. You know, we have these ideas, but actually for them to come to life and the flavors to be right, it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, so we wanted to share that process with you. Like for example, today with the lemon cookie, this is the second time we've tested, tasted something. And I would say they were pretty much equally on par with each other, but yet the flavors don't even line up. 
you know, so that's a struggle for sure. The overall production and manufacturing has been just ridiculous. Like we've said, this is everyone in the industry, everyone right. in every industry right now. Too. Yeah, I mean, there's so many issues. I mean, we can go to supply chain. You can go to, you know, issues with athletes. You can go to, you know, we're at the point now where we're getting humongous POs and our POs are, you know, they're seven figure POs and now you need capital, right? And you need you can't like tie up all your capital and in inventory. So there's a million things that go on behind the scenes and we're pretty transparent about it, I feel like. I mean, the last, we did a podcast and talked about a lot of issues we were having before, um, but they're all good issues. I mean, they're all, you know, we, we wouldn't be having these things if we weren't growing or if, you know, we weren't, you know, running out of product or if we weren't, you know, trying to get, do the best for our athletes. And it's just, it comes with the territory and you can look at them as problems or you can look at them as, you know, blessings in disguise, but I don't necessarily think that there, I don't think our Instagram is always a highlight reel. I think we just post things that we enjoy posting. It's not like, agreed, right? Yeah. I don't think they were saying it in a negative way. They just, no, yeah. I think it was just like, obviously everybody always posts. Yeah, no, for the sure. Positive, but yeah. we just hired a new team member who we're going to do a lot more of that behind the scenes stuff yeah. anyway. So that'll be cool. I know people like that first episode of the raw life. They got a lot of laughs out of it. I think, um, know that got posted what was it today yeah, mm -hmm. yesterday we posted like um basically that behind the scenes vlogging site you know vlog site vlogging vlogging where what, what is it up what it's youtube it? it's on uh, oh it, you guys did a sampling thing it was a one that was filmed a little while back of, oh, some, okay. of some first round samples yeah you guys see yourself in the next like five years i think we'll be doing matt, the same shit we're doing now <laughs> matt got a giggle right yeah more or less. <laughs> <laughs> Are you already ready to write right off into the sunset, Matt? No, I'll just have a new phone number by then. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair enough. Yeah, I feel like it'll be different, but the same. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. That's it. Um, this I like this question because we are talking a lot about athletes internally right now. Um, how can you sell slash brand yourself specifically as an athlete early on in your career? Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Let them have it. You got to What's the word I'm looking for? You have to make yourself a value. Yeah. Like whenever yeah. anyone texts me, like, how do I become? Or the number one thing people ask me for was, how do I become a Gymshark athlete? And I'm like, mm -hmm. you don't. I've never had a goal to be an athlete for a brand or even an athlete or a sponsor. It wasn't ever my intention. The first email I ever got, be sponsored from MHP. They emailed me. I was getting, like, under two grand a month or something. And I, like ran downstairs to show my sister and Ian who I was living with and I was like freaking out because I didn't even think it was coming. Yeah. It was just like I was doing something I loved and I was sharing it as I could and it was like it was never a goal of mine. So it's hard for me to kind of say that. But as a company, we look for people who bring value, people who are genuine and like not assholes. Because I think especially at ourselves, we, we want to bring a sort of culture where when we can all get together, not only are you – able to sell and you have a bunch of followers but like we actually want to spend time with you and you're treating the people around you in your life with good respect and that you were a respected individual which that word can carry more than you think yeah i think it's just building yourself before you rely on a brand to build you right like a, br you, a brand will never build yeah. you so like i mean well, a good example is like when we were in aspen and we were talking to marco like marco told us that he um if you don't know marco i think was his instagram name jack's italian or some shit like yeah, that marco yeah. or something um but he basically told me like he tried youtube one time and he was like trying to be like you know something that he wasn't in a way and he was like it fucking failed and then he just like started doing his own thing and like he started i think he started a tiktok reselling clothes and then he got into like reselling sneakers and then he just got into fitness and like it just kind of built himself as a brand and then that built him into something people wanted you know like anaka and all the other places like that's how he got where he is today but I mean, we do it really well, too, I think, on our side. is like we don't build athletes through Raw and Revive. We build the athlete to then be valuable to us when they get here. You know what I mean? Does that yeah. make sense? Like we focus on them, you know, making sure they're doing their content, making sure they're building their YouTube following, making sure they're doing all the things they need to do in order to be successful with or without us. And in turn, as they grow as an as a individual, it helps us because, you know, they're sponsor we sponsor them. Mm -hmm. So... I think that's one of the biggest issues like these kids looking for brands or sponsorships like you know we could sign a kid tomorrow who asks us to and it's not going to change his life at all yep he needs to change his life 
You they know? put in the work. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to gain a bajillion followers and all of a sudden start getting all these deals because we signed him. Like, mm -hmm. he has to have that value before he comes here, and then we could together grow it even more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on a personal, more than st business standpoint, like you were talking about with Marco, how he tried one way and yeah. it, like, didn't work. Yeah. If you start social media and you think there's, like, and you see a bunch of other people doing it and you're, like, asking, how do I become an athlete? This person's an athlete, and you're trying to emulate that kind of shit, and you're not being yourself... I'm saying on the personal side, that's going to create a lot of anxiety and insecurity in yourself. Because if, if you get a bunch of praise, it's going to be bullshit and you know it's not for you. Yeah. Anything you might get is just going to be for something that you're not. You see, I see people in real life and those are the people you meet who are just like completely different than they are on their social media, which people can tell. Yeah. Not only that, people are getting smart, so normally they can see through your bullshit. Quickly. So you're going to fucking hate yourself. You're going to be anxious and people are going to be able to see through it. So there's just no benefit. So instead of like trying to see what people want, be yourself and just work hard. Like, there's no secret to social media. You have to share content, create value, give back to the people who support you, and do what you love. Yeah. Here's the advice you gave Savannah. It was just post what you want. Whatever the hell you That's want. It. Whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want. That's what you said. <laughs> Literally, that's what you said. To wrap it up, I think this is a fun one. I think it's a good question to ask up to this point or what are the proudest one of the proudest moments you guys have achieved i mean i always my mind always just jumps back to 2018 the second year i lost the olympia that was your proudest moment one of the, my mind just jumps there. i have a lot of proud moments i've sure. had a very sure. fulfilling life especially for my age but that was the year where like i went through one of the hardest points ever in my life and i was like something my career my life my future was being stripped away from me my health my everything and then i was like able to like not shun my emotions, but like master them and move through them and still accomplish getting on stage at the Olympia and not making a fool of myself. And it just like, that was, I was 23 or I think it was 23, mm -hmm. 24 or whatever. But it was at a young age and I was becoming like an adult. And that was like my like point where it's like, okay, if I can like control my mind like this and get through this kind of shit, I can get through anything. And that really built like a self-confidence and belief in myself and going forward, it's like that belief that has grown in me that's like made me feel confident that I can do anything. And even if I fail, it's like, fuck it, do the next thing. You're like, it's just like, I find self-belief is something a lot of people lack. And it's one of the biggest things that like lead to success. And that was like a big moment that built it inside myself. Yeah. I think the first one that pops into my head is retiring my mom. Nice. Keeping her like here and, you know, giving her an opportunity to, to be here. She'll never retire though. Really? No, I mean like not retire her, but like... <laughs> Just keep her here. She's a workhorse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say definitely my kids. Um, and then more so than that, like seeing my kids treat other people with respect. So I'm assuming that what, when this is going to launch, we ha or when this is live, we have a new protein out. Yes. New flavor. Monday? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It'll, it'll, well, no, it'll be coming this week. I'm sorry. On Wednesday. Yeah. I was say. It'll be live Wednesday the 9th. Yes. Yeah, what, what are we call it? Fruity cereal. Fruity Bro, cereal. It's fruity cereal milk, isn't it? No, it's called fruity cereal. It just says fruity cereal. Okay. Well, it tastes like fruity cereal milk. Do I need to change the label? Definitely. <laughs> Let's just call it fruit cake. Put a picture of Dom on it. That's so nice of you. Wow. Guys. You're just such a sweet guy. I love sharing a couch with you every day. <laughs> I told you, someone's got to bring you down a notch every now and then. True. I'm just over I'm your shoulder. Guess. Fruit cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new protein flavor this week. It's All really taste, good. It's and then fire. this one is coming. Yep. What was it called? Caramel, um, mocha, macchiato. macchiato. We'll probably get sued by Starbucks. If Buckstar. We say Buckstar. Isn't a macchiato like a thing, though? Yeah, it's a coffee drink. Or it's a, a type of coffee. So you, it's can a coffee say, drink. you can say macchiato? I think so. Pup or it's it, a puppuccino. A no, that's for a dog. Puppuccino. That's for the Wudson. Kirk loves those things. <laughs> loves them. He eats them in 11 seconds flat. That's a long time. I figured he would just eat the cup. Mm, nah, he's, he's elegant. Uh, sure. Yeah. He just finished an apple core an hour ago. Yeah, so. I'm like a full apple, and he's like, oh. It was the middle of the apple, and he's likes the middle of apples. By this time, or we should, it'll be. No, it'll, well, we won't announce them yet. We won't announce them yet. We've picked it. It'll be announcing the week this is. It'll up. be it announcing be. this week. Is it the same day we announce the protein? It doesn't have to be. We have to call the winner. Yeah, we, ha sure. we have the winner. Let's do the protein Wednesday, winner Friday. Yeah, yeah. let's like End zoom of the week. It. Let's you, like zoom call her and just like film it. Or him. You guys know it. Okay. I, I guess said you're it. not going to know who it is. <laughs> I said film it, right? You said her. I said her. Damn. Her or him. <laughs> her. Are there, for those. We, we Every guy's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a return, please? <laughs> for, so this we, is rigged. <laughs> we hired a third party sweet safe company and they got us back to us today. 
So we know who it is, and now we just got to call them. What happened to the first person? It just wasn't right? What do you mean? Like the first no, they one sent, you showed us. They sent us a name, and we just tried to find her. Oh, and that was oh, the wrong person. And then we found I, the wrong we person. We found the wrong person. Uh, yeah, gotta, because gotta, gotta, it's gotta, gotta, gotta. It, surprisingly hard to find people on the internet. Yeah. Sometimes. Give it to Sammy. She'll find them. <laughs> it's like the CIA. We found her. So that'll be happening. That'll be fun. We'll, walk, we'll uh, do some behind the scenes of that. That'll be a good time. I'm pumped for that. I can't wait. Got a couple more products coming down the pipeline. Probiotic this month. Everybody knows that's coming. Yeah. That's exciting. And then later in the month. We got some good shit coming later in the some month. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> First. Monster restock. Monster. This month is a monster. A busy month. New Set your drop. fucking calendar. Yep. We got next Wednesday and then the 21st. The 21st. Is just get ready. Yep. I mean, this isn't the most epic restock we've had, I think, since we started the company. All right. Sweet. That's a wrap. Adios. Episode 8, version 2.